Hey, y'all, and welcome back to another episode here on GEMS Podcast. I am the founder and host, Miss Genesis Amaris Kemp, and with me in the hot seat is Marquise Edwards. Here's a bit about Marquise, y'all. He is an Air Force veteran. He is also in the digital creator space, father, community outreach advocate, network specialist, entrepreneur with a passion for equality, a traveler, and in the nonprofit space. So it definitely does a little bit of everything. He's dedicated and energetic podcaster. Marquise is a 10 year US Army veteran, born in Chicago, Illinois, and father of two. Marquise specializes in network engineering with a passion for digital creation, travel, writing, and creativity. He is currently enrolled in the University of Maryland with a major in business administration. Marquise has a dream to create a nonprofit organization for underprivileged families to travel the world. He is currently the host of Flavor in Your Ear, strictly forbidden flavors and Marquise and friends podcasts that range from audio, video, and topics for all audiences. And without further ado, please welcome Marquise Edwards to GEMS Podcast. <laughs> hey, what's going on? What's going on, everybody? The, the bio makes me sound really good, interesting. It's the true, all true facts, though. But it makes me feel good, so I can say I gotta, you know, relax, relax a little bit. But yes, man, that is me. I'm Marquise. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm happy to be here and happy to have a good conversation with a fellow podcaster. So it's it's a blessing, and I thank you for the opportunity. My pleasure. And before we dive into learning about your experience in the military, your passion for nonprofit and and equality as a whole, let's connect with you a little more on a personal level. So I'm going to give you two options. The first one is we could play a rapid fire game that consists of 10 questions or break the ice up front. What's your beat? What do you want to do? That rapid fire sounds pretty intense, so I, I'll go for that one. <laughs> Woo! We're playing rapid fire with Genesis and Marquise. So question number one, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Hmm. Mind reading. Two, favorite movie? Uh, Tombstone. Tombstone, okay. Mm -hmm. Three. You could go anywhere in the world. Money was no option, but here's the kicker. You just found out that there are no more flights going back to your home base. Where are you going? I want to go back. Uh, I think Ghana or somewhere like that. Yeah, Ghana. I heard Ghana's cool. I think, I think I'll, I'll be stuck in Ghana. Money go a little bit longer there too. So yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> Four, dream car. My dream car. I'm not really a car guy, but I've seen some nice little Lamborghinis, and of course, I'm surface is heck is heck with that. So I'm not really a car guy. I'll probably be in a beater, but if I had to dream about something, the one with those what they call them suicide doors and stuff, you know, if I was trying to be flashy, I'll probably choose that one. <laughs> okay. See. Okay. Now you. Now you in my lane. You in my lane. Okay, Marquise. Because mine <laughs> is a black Lambo with a Ooh. black interior, all leather with some blue neon lights, and I gotta have the suicide or butterfly doors. I Ooh. am a car Ooh. chick. I love the need for speed. <laughs> Ooh, I dig it. <laughs> Five, if you could go back in time and give your younger self a piece of advice, what would it be? One of 100, uh, I'll say, hmm. That's a good one. So you, I'm usually not stumped on questions. So that one, let me see if I can tell one thing. If I could say one thing that I can tell to my younger self was uh, exercise more patience and don't uh, worry about peer pressure. Because when we're younger, I feel like uh, even as adults, right, peer pressure is like a thing. And when you're younger, you, you care so much about what other people say. And I feel like as a kid, I shouldn't have worried about what anybody say your dreams your dreams go to what you want to go for and don't care if you're the only one that's purple and everybody else is blue you know don't worry about it because you'll be fine when you get older mm, okay i love the substance behind that because peer pressure can definitely derail you six are you a coffee or tea drinker or neither 
I drank tea when I went to Japan. I kind of adopted tea. Coffee, I told myself, and I may sound bad because of this. I said I'm not drinking coffee until I get old, and I don't feel like I'm old right now. So <laughs> I feel like I'm still riding on natural energy, but I'm a tea guy. I do like tea. Okay. Seven. Apple or Android? Ooh, they could be mad at me, but Team Apple. I used to be an Android, and I'm I'm an Apple guy now, and I have not crossed back over ever since. So I'm Apple. Okay, I I can only rock with you halfway because I'm not <laughs> Apple for my computer, but Android for my phone because I need my phone to be unrestricted. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the I think it's the format and convenience and. It's really like a little more organized. I'm a nerdy guy and I can manipulate an Android like crazy. But once I got the iPhone, I feel like everything was just super accessible, even though it's probably just a mind thing, but I don't know. I have to choose what I have right now. Hey, you're in the car, you're pumped up, you're listening to your jam. What are you listening to? Uh oh, who the rest of? I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> I'm probably listening to some '90s rap and '90s R&B. I was born in the '80s, so I, I have a passion. I do like new school stuff, but I'm still, you know, one of those people who rocks the '90s rap and R&B. Uh, you know, I feel like R&B has never recovered from the '90s, in my opinion. Uh, so I do love the songs and the, you know, all of the rhythms of the, you know, TOC and all that stuff. I love all those type of vibes. So that's what I'm grooving to when I'm in the car. Okay, so you're going to Don't Go Chasing Waterfalls. Ooh, say it again. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> you're on a deserted island, right? Get, mm. And I want you to visualize this. You're on the deserted island. There's a beach. Everything is plush. And you're just enjoying yourself. But then they only give you a limited amount of money to spend. And you could only buy one item from this store. So you could get two bananas and a mango. You could get your favorite CD or you could get a t-shirt. What are you buying? <laughs> two bananas and a mango? <laughs> okay. Nutrition. I like mango. You caught me with mangoes. Mango is my favorite fruit. So that's probably the only determining factor. T-shirt, I will, I mean, I'm on the island chilling. I, I, clothes is not that big an option to me. The CD, yeah. Yeah, no, I'll take the, the bananas and the mangoes. <laughs> Make me a good shake or something, because mango is my favorite fruit, too. So, yeah. <laughs> Dad, we're going to, this is our pass or play question. So if you play, I ask you one last question. If you pass, you could change roles with me and ask me a question. Do you want to pass or play? I'll play. I'll play. Okay. So if you're writing your bucket list, what are the top three items on your bucket list? Mm. Dig deep, dig deep. <laughs> uh, hmm. uh, top three things on my bucket list. Number one, I guess I would have like a travel list of places to go. Right, I'm a traveler. I like traveling now, so that's pretty cool to me. Um, I would want to write a book about myself. That's something else I want to do. Uh, anybody out there thinking I'm going to say like skydiving or some wild stuff, y'all can forget it because that ain't even me. So I'm not doing that. But I probably would like to, uh, you know, do something a little, I don't know, something that's like super exciting if my body can handle it when I get older. But I don't know exactly what that is, but it's not skydiving. and It's not bungee jumping. I'm not going to do those. So I don't know exactly what it is, but something that kind of like, you know, keeps me feeling young. But, you know, traveling is probably the best thing to like a lot of things on my bucket list, I would like to write a book about myself and then something just like exotic, like, you know, pet a lion or something, you know, something crazy like that. Awesome. And thank you, Marquise, for playing Rapid Fire with Genesis. Now let's dive into our segment. I want to hear what was it like being African-American in the military? And did your experience force you to be so passionate about equality? So my experience as an African-American in the U.S. Air Force. Uh, so a little bit of backstory. I did come from, you know, pretty questionably rough environment and background. Um, and I'm, I'm a big advocate of not being a product of your environment. So, you know, I made it my, uh, I made it my business not to reflect, you know, what I was surrounded by. So that had me at another level of consciousness when I went into the to the to the military 
and everything like that. So, you know, all the pressure of being African-American, trying to fit in, be equal, uh, not, sh you know, not feed into stereotypes and things like that. That was uh, an eye-opening experience because um, it's an adjustment. It's an adjustment with your life. It's an adjustment with somebody telling you what to do all the time. It's an adjustment with people uh, get to question you, yell at you, uh, you know, boss you around. And that's a part of the job. So I, I've said this before. I don't know if I can say uh, profanity here, but it's uh it's the only job you can be an, an a hole and like still be employed like that's that's the military right because it's you know serious it's a bunch of like you know old warmongers and things that's in there young warmongers and man things so that was an adjustment for me personally um because you go in trying to do so much it's and it's highly stressful so adjusting to stress on a daily basis was really for me a big uh leap in my life because I was used to dealing with different stress, but not military stress uh, in that regard. So uh, my experience, I've grown now. I've been in like uh, about this 10 years and that's my 10th year now. So I've, I've grown now, but when I first got in, that was a huge adjustment for me. And I can understand everybody probably wasn't mentally to where I was when I first got in. So, and I had to learn too. So that was a big adjustment for me, which I, you know, I, I beat that um, or whatnot. And as far as equality, how it equates to my military experience. Yes, uh, I've always been a person about equality. Before it was popular, I hate to say that, uh, before it was popular, I'm a, a huge fan of history, of not only you know, African-American history, just history in general, things like that. I know people sacrifice for us to have you know, certain privileges that we have today that some people uh, appreciate and some people take you know, don't take advantage of or, or appreciate, but I appreciate the privileges that I have. So, um, my journey about equality is just seeing the different blessings that people around the world get to get. And I feel like everybody, if they had opportunity to see some things that I saw or being able to go some places I went to their perspective would change on a lot of things in their lives. Right. Because um, like I said, I was a, a kid from the South side of Chicago and had I only seen the South side of Chicago, I would be a product of the South side of Chicago. And I'm not saying that's super wrong, but there's a lot more to do in the world. There's a lot more uh, to see in the world. And it changes just your perspective on things when you're able to experience different things. So me with equality, I said, man, I wish that everybody could see this or see that or experience this or experience that. So that was huge for me and my quest for trying to do my part in this world of 6 billion people, you know, to be an advocate for equality. So, yeah. I love that. And you mentioned that this is your 16 year. Whenever you say 16 years, put it uh, put that in context, because I want to make sure that I'm not assuming because you were in the uh, U.S. Air Force and you got out. Right. Or are I you know, still I'm, in? I'm, I'm 10 years, 10 years. I've been in 10 years. Oh, 10 years. You've been in 10 and years. I'm, and I'm still in now. Yes, ma'am. OK, so um, seeing some of the new up and coming people come into the military and you getting through um, some of the challenges that you face, are you an advocate to kind of help them or like a mentor? Because you've already been where they are, but if you could give them a glimpse of hope or help them shift their mindset so they can last as long as you have, um, what type of conversations would you have with those individuals? So oh, the beauty of, well, I don't know if it's the beauty, but uh, the Air Force, we once we reach, reach a certain rank, we have to supervise people. And it's not like a supervisor like in CVS or Target or Walmart and anything like that. It's you really get, have to be involved in people's lives, right? Because the military uh, gives a lot of attention to the military outside of your own life. So we have to know where they sleep, where they eat, how they're doing, the exercise, and if they're happy, sad. So uh, me being a supervisor now, I definitely make it a, a huge point to tell those, especially those who look like me, uh, some of the experiences that I had. And, uh, you know, and those who don't, I tell them some of the experiences I had as well that I have to learn, um, just, you know, to give them some keys and hope to how to deal with things. I never understood a lot about uh, mental health uh, like I do now. I never understood about, you know, uh, how stress can affect you and how you can be operating on a daily basis and be really, really, really stressed out. And no one can notice if they don't care. Um, I try to be that person that I needed when I was first getting in, even though I joined at about 24, 23, 24. So I joined a little bit, a little bit early in my lifetime. So I wasn't like an 18 year old. So when I talk to somebody 18, 19 years old, you know, I'm telling them, Hey, you got time. 
you know, don't do this, don't do that. You know, try to get them some mentorship in that regard. And that's just who I am. If I was in the military or not, I would be giving anybody that was younger, you know, trying to give them a little bit more guidance. And who knows if they're listening or not, but I, I'm genuine with it. So I feel like being genuine with my approach, uh, it'll help some people. And I've had some really good relations with some of the younger crowd um, as far as, you know, feedback because i give it to them a natural ses- session it's not like oh i'm the high and mighty 10 year guy Talk- i don't i don't do that to them you know i'm i'm talking as if i'm a friend or if i'm you know somebody who cares about them and they kind of receive that feedback pretty well so i like that because you're coming to them on a level where okay you aren't um just their high-ranking official but you actually care about them and you want them to see you as an equal minus what the title or the ranking is because i feel like sometimes people could get intimidated by the ranking um Mm -hmm. one of the things you meant you mentioned in your bio is that you would love to um, really start a nonprofit organization to help underprivileged people travel the world. And I think that's so commendable because I feel like if you've never left your home base, if you've never been out of the country, then you're missing out on life because there are so many incredible people around the world, so many vast cultures to learn and submerge yourself into. And it just definitely opens up your um, mind frame and gives you a new perspective. So why are you so focused on this area of nonprofit? And have you started, you know, looking at what it would look like for you to start the nonprofit, what some of the um, people you could partner with and et cetera be? Oh, it's probably a little long, lengthy, but so during the times in the U.S. when we had all of the, you know, the George Floyd and things like the racial tensions in the states and things like that, I w- I've been overseas the whole time since it happened. So I, I fly back to, to visit family, come back, you know, fly back and forth or whatnot. So when that was going on, uh, it was more than just that one, but that was kind of like the highlight of what everything was going on. I kind of felt uh, like I wasn't associated with the, the, you know, what was going on within the states, you know, as far as like African American people, whatever the struggle might have been to understand this. So I really feel like, man, I'm in a different world. I'm a different light. And that's kind of crazy that I don't feel a part of it. So uh I've always wanted to help others in my lifetime. And uh I was thinking the ways, all right, let me stop always saying I'm gonna do it and start trying to take some active steps to doing something without saying I'm gonna do it. My heart's always in a good place, but sometimes you push things on the back burner just because that's life, right? You mean you say I'm gonna do it later on. So I said, what can I do now, even though I'm active duty in the military, to try to get to this point, to this big ultimate goal, right? So we was quarantined here in Italy. I'm talking about literally work and go back home. It was the most depressing time in the history of my life <laughs> with quarantine here. It was way worse than in the States. And it was like, I don't know if you ever heard the uh, the saying when your mom, was, your mom and dad imagine they say, go stand in the corner and look at the paint dry on the wall. I felt like that's what I was doing as a grown adult. I was like, man, we are coming here. It was bad. Uh, and it's nothing like being stuck in the house uh, when they tell you to get stuck in the house. It was like bad, bad. So that led me to uh, listen to podcasts. I was listening to podcasts. And I said, oh, man, you know, they're having some good conversations here. And, you know, I would like to talk about some things, too. So I looked it up. You know, I'm, I'm more trying to be super official with everything I do. So I'm doing all my homework and reading. I was in college class as well. And I was just reading and reading. And I said, you know what? For my birthday, I'm going to do it. You know, so my birthday was October the 4th, it is October the 4th, and I shot for my, my uh, birthday release. I announced to everybody live on Facebook because I said, if now, because I told everybody, I got to do it, you know, because you, you know, I even said, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. When I said it on Facebook, I said, all right, now I got to hold myself accountable. I got to do it because I told everybody, you know, that I'm going to do it. So I did it. And I, the reason why I do it is more so because I do work a lot and it's more so of a passion for me. And, uh, I feel like it was a good gateway for me to network with others, get my voice out there, hear other people's stories, talk to other people about my story, and also, you know, let people know what my end goal is for the whole nonprofit thing. And for the whole nonprofit thing, right, um, I've traveled to like over 30 countries since I've been in the military. So it's been it's been a good ride for traveling. You know, that's what each, that's actually what balances balances me is the travel. I'm in Europe. I've been in Asia, going everywhere, and you see a lot of good things, cool places, and stuff like that. And I also saw people struggling and things like that there to know that us in the U.S. have a different type of struggle. We have a first world struggle because I've seen two and three in the morning, like in Thailand or Philippines or something like that. You got a mother that's pregnant with a baby on her on her on her hip, like selling like trinkets two three in the morning around like you know parties and clubs and stuff like that, like barefoot, 
life ain't that bad for nobody. And well, some people is in the states, but it just put perspective that if you see other people struggle, you maybe appreciate your struggle a little bit more. And also, I said, man, you know, I kind of saw elephants and tigers and stuff, so that was cool too, right? And I'm like, man, I. I wish others would be able to see this because it's a blessing to be able to see different things, right? Now I've been to Italy and I go to Spain or Croatia on the weekend or Germany on the weekend. And these are p- places that people go, you know, for tourism. And I get to go, you know, just because I'm get the I'm blessed to be stationed here. So I say, you know what? This feeling that I have and how appreciative I am, I want to make it a goal of mine for other people to feel this, other families to feel this, right? So they can, who knows, man? They, they can take somebody off the street or take somebody for not believing that they can be something in the world. I don't know what it can, you know. I, I, that's my plight. I want to, I want to be able to do that. So I said, I'm a podcast. While I'm in, I'm gonna start building a network of people. Start trying to build a brand of people, and hopefully, if I keep going with this and I keep being consistent with it, who knows down the road if the right person hears it, or I, I'm in a better position myself to be able to, you know. Uh, start the non the nonprofit on my own, like maybe bless one family a year or somebody got good grades or somebody who's doing real well or, or family that you know how to I don't know if you know those old shows when people used to walk up to people and they surprise them with like a check or something like that. It's like the old school thing and knock on their door. I want to do that. You know, I want to do it to 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 a, a minority family, you know, that wasn't expecting it, probably never been nowhere. Hey look, I got y'all passports, y'all going to blah 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 for a week. You know, I think that'll really, really change a lot of people's lives and I want to do that. So I changed my I changed my major in, in uh, college and everything for business administration because I want to learn more officially how to be a business person. I'm a cyber guy by trade, but I figured out that with, with the cyber stuff, I can still get certificates and still be good in cyber, but I want to have business administration under my belt. So I changed my major and everything. So I'm really serious about this. So uh, it's more so me making uh, <laughs> making grounds for, uh, you know, future moves, uh, what I'm doing right now with podcasting. So. I love that because as you were talking, what I what resonated with me was the servant leadership, you giving back, you making it possible to leave an imprint that is driving an impact. Because if you could just imprint the fact that you are giving a trip to somebody who would not be able to afford it otherwise, that's really impacting their quality of life and the way they see things. And then to take um, your background, from some of the things that you've experienced and seen and said, man, I've been so blessed to be in this space. I just want others to have the same opportunities to me. It shows that you're more than just Marquise. It shows that you're really there to help other people. And that's about, you know, having equality. It's about tying back to your core values, your personal mission and your purpose. And I think that would be great. Um, to hear more about and those those along with all of the things that you've experienced in your life things that we've mentioned here on this segment and things that we haven't would definitely be good to put in a book especially from a african-american person who served in the military who grew up in in chicago illinois where people thought that, okay, he's either going to be a statistic or he's going to be this. And just to break those molds or break those generational curses and lineage is incredible. And I think having conversations like this, Marquise, that is very transparent um, and just real and raw will definitely um, open up people's mindset because they may not be able to just sit down and have a conversation. So for somebody who is listening to you today and they kind of heard you share some of the things that you've shared. What are some um, words of advice that you would like to leave them with? Because sometimes people just need a word of encouragement or they need that inspiration or they need to know that your circumstances do not define where you're going in life. The situations that you're in right now are temporary and you don't have to allow that to condition you. As long as you shift your mindset and your perspective, you can achieve your wildest dreams. Uh, You said a lot. That was very true to actually ask the question as well. But uh, I would say, uh, you know, I'm no one who's like mythical or no like huge success story like that. I'm just someone who's appreciative uh, of, of the decisions that I was able to make and opportunities that I was able to have. And I want to encourage others. You know, I think in this life, uh, what you leave, you know, here for everybody else is how you remember. So, and I kind of feel like with podcasting too, I said, man, there's too many celebrities out here. And no, no knocking celebrities like that, but they dictate too much what somebody who doesn't live like them will see what they see, 
how they how their life is, right? You got everybody out here trying to live outside of their means and do so many different things because they see celebrities do it, right? But I'm not a celebrity, right? I'm working for everything that I get. And I'm telling you, it's still a way for you to be happy because if your happiness is based on someone who makes millions of dollars and you don't make millions of dollars, you feel like you're a failure. You feel like you're never going to get there, you know? So I came from a neighborhood where, you know, it was gang shootings and violence and drug dealers. And, but my mom, you know, my mom raised me correctly to where, you know, I had morals and principles and, you know what I'm saying? I had something. So don't ever make anybody feel like you should drop your morals and principles, you know, to be somebody who, or chase and be successful. You don't have to do that. Right. It may be hard. It may, I'm not saying my life was peaches and cream and anything like that, but you got to stay with it. You, you are the number one believer in yourself. I'll say that. Um, I've, I've, I've seen fights and, you know, I've seen all of the stuff that people on world star, maybe, you no, know, they may be showing things like that, but that didn't define who I was. Right. Even the music I, I listened to doesn't define who I, who, no, who I am either. Right. So, I mean, it's just, a lot of things like that that you have to use personally, you know. I so I'll tell anybody out there young, right? Don't get all hype with the celebrities, and like, we like them, we love entertainment. I love the, I love that they're there and they show some degree of success for you know, everyone, but that's not your reality. And if you chase that your whole life, you'll probably feel incomplete, right? Um, there are ways to be successful, you know, and to be happy and content with your life that you can do right now, right? If you're somewhere living in a bad area or something like that best believe you can work your way out of it. You can get out of there. You'll never be there forever. If you really want to, you can't be influenced by everybody else around you. If they, I think it's called like the cage tiger syndrome or cage lion syndrome, where you've been in a, you've been in a, a cage for so long when they finally open the gate, right. That you don't want to leave. Right. You'd like, like, you like, it's either like you're going to blitz out of there or you've been in the cage so long, you don't know anything outside of the cage. Right. So I'm trying to stop the cage lion syndrome with, you know, Minorities and things like that's for everybody, right? But it's, it's a focus on minority because I'm a minority. So my focus is always going to be on minorities primarily, but anybody. I mean, it's, it doesn't have a, a race or, you know, a gender of people who may be in the funk, right? So I'm open to everybody, but I'm focusing on minorities because I know how it feels to be a minority and go through these things. So that, my, that was my advice is no, nothing lasts forever. Uh, if you truly don't want to be in a situation, it, it may take time. But you got to make strides every day to, to get out of that. And you never, you'll never know who might be out there to help you because maybe somebody didn't know somebody, somebody like me had this experience and I want to help people like that, you know, even either with knowledge, you know, helping them out and things like that. So yeah, that's my advice. It's a lot of, it's a lot of advice in one, but uh, I really, I'm really passionate about, you know, helping others. And one thing about helping others, you help people more that want to help themselves. You got to want to help yourself. It starts with you, self-love, self-care, uh, self-awareness all that stuff starts with you because people get motivated off your want to get something and that's kind of how I am as well absolutely those were some brilliant um advice nuggets or as I like to say gems so Marquise I want you to leave them with your call to action for this segment and then plug your website and your um, social media platforms where you primarily hang out the most I've been starting to hang out on all social media a little bit more than I have before. So uh, not Twitter yet, but Elon Musk just bought Twitter. So I might have to dust the Twitter off. <laughs> I might have to dust it off. So uh, look forward to Twitter. I'm not on Twitter as much, but uh, Instagram, um, flavor underscore in underscore your underscore ear underscore podcast. So flipping your ear podcast with a bunch of underscores in the middle. Uh, on Facebook is flipping your ear podcast. I uh, have uh, websites as well, but you can find those in my links on the social media, my link tree, um, where my podcast is released and everything like that. I'm trying to be more engaged. I'm not a bit like a big reeler yet. I'm trying to do reels, but I do you know, throw some informational things out there and tips sometimes when I can. Uh, so those primarily Facebook and uh, Instagram where you can find me. And if you have any email questions, um, flavor in your ear 247 at gmail.com. So 24 seven, you can message me anytime. And even, even if you want to talk to somebody, I have a question that you may be afraid, you know, to ask somebody else, you know, I'm always a good neutral person. So that's how you can find me. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to be able to even you know, shout myself out. My pleasure. And there you have it, y'all. Um, Marquise Edwards, all of his contact information will be in the show notes. Definitely go check out his podcast and plug in with some of the other incredible things that he has going on. If you're interested or thinking about going to the military and you're not really sure what branch, um, 
tap in with him. He may have some, some rhyme and reasons to why he picked the U.S. Air Force. And make sure you subscribe and share this segment. We're on 40 plus platforms. You can find all video components at YouTube by typing at GEMS with Genesis Amaris Kemp. And lastly, but not least, I want to thank you for continuing to support the mission of GEMS podcast, which is to educate, inspire, and motivate. And because of you, we are now ranked in the top 3% globally out of 2.8 million podcasts per www dot listen notes dot com so we are opening slots for brand sponsors that could be you so head on over to genesis amaris kemp dot net to find out how you can have your products your services or just overall continue to contribute to the mission until next time peace love and lots of blessings go out there and be great and as nike would say just do it (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.